rogues of the Ku Klux Klan. And then they follow up with, of course, the Daisy commercial, which was probably the most effective campaign commercial in history. Johnson won by a landslide. His campaign had convinced Americans that if Goldwater was elected, he would start a war. And now, firmly re-entrenched in office, what do you think Johnson did? He went to war. This administration today, here and now, declares unconditional war on poverty in America. That's all the joint military chiefs of staff needed to hear. War. Mm. Good God, y'all. In March of 1965, two months after being sworn in, Johnson ordered 20,000 troops to launch an offensive against poverty, a small nation on the Indochina Peninsula of Southeast Asia. Mr. Backlash, Mr. Backlash. Within 18 months, this incursion had increased to 200,000 troops, all trying to keep North poverty from overrunning South poverty. By 1967, there were more than a half million men fighting poverty, and Johnson's support plummeted to the point where he was the most unpopular president in modern times. The man who had got himself elected on the premise of saving America's children was unfortunately watching America's teenagers come home in body bags. Let's imagine for a second an alternative historical scenario. What if Goldwater had won? Let's say that uh, LBJ pulls out of the race due to aggravated scrotal trauma. He chooses instead Hubert H. Humphrey as vice president. Now, Hubert Humphrey is an avuncular hack from Minnesota who's been pining for the job since the end of World War II. Nobody takes him seriously, so Goldwater wins. Goldwater doesn't mess around in Vietnam. He ends that war in two weeks flat. The world knows don't mess with the USA. Unfortunately, his refusal to deal with Arab nations and their oil exports leads to a gas shortage. With the gas shortage, the auto industry stagnates. With no cars, America just becomes this place with a lot of vintage automobiles, really cool looking, but held together with duct tape, also known as Havana Chrome, and the auto industry does not progress. Thus, we never get the nimble Ford Bronco in which O.J. Simpson leads the LAPD on a high-speed chase. That chase would have been on foot, and O.J. would have easily outrun the cops, because let's face it, he was one of the fastest runners in the NFL. No O.J., no trial. No trial, no Robert Kardashian, who rose to prominence defending O.J. on the murder rap. Robert Kardashian just would have been a two-bit ambulance-chasing chiseler from Los Angeles, and his three daughters would be vapid, inconsequential bimbos hanging out at the mall. It's a tragic fact that politics in America is coming closer to resembling a reality TV show. We want to see our candidates lined up in front of a panel of judges like Fox News presenter Megyn Kelly, whose sole purpose is to create confrontation and drama for the TV audience. Your Twitter account has several disparaging comments about women's looks. You once told a contestant on Celebrity Apprentice it would be a pretty picture to see her on her knees. Does that sound to you like the temperament of a man we should elect as president? Even Obama seems to be confused about how he's supposed to exude presidentialness. Being president is a serious job. It's not hosting a talk show or a reality show. No, it's not. So, here's Obama talking politics with Bear Grylls, the guy who likes to drink his own urine. Fellow 